Hello everybody, my name is Joshua and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Coffee, Cats, and King. Where we will discuss books, both new and old. I will share with you pictures of my cats who will make you wish they were your cats. And I will drink enough coffee for me and everybody watching. My mug is one that you guys are familiar with. It says I turned coffee into books. My shirt is a new one. This was a really awesome Christmas gift from my sister, Courage Cowley Dog. I'm a huge fan of Courage. Um, as a lot of you horror fans who grew up around the time I did are. Uh, so, I am here today with my December wrap up. Um, it's quite a hefty one. I finished 16 books. And I DNF one, um, and there's one that I said I was going to get to that I'm not going to be able to until later. We'll go over that, but uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking here in the beginning because I have so many books to go through. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I'm going to start with the book that I DNF'd. Uh, and when I put a book on a DNF list for me, I don't intend to ever pick this book up again. If there's any chance of me potentially picking a book up again later in the future, um, then I'll just set it aside and let myself forget about it. But a book that I know that I do not want to read, that's what goes on the DNF list. So this is one of them. This is the autobiography of Santa Claus as told by Jeff, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> this was the DNF for me. Now I read a couple Santa Claus stories last month being December. That one I knew right from the start it wasn't going to work for me. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, I just I have no interest in reading that book. The one that I wanted to read but realized I could not was Spider Robinson's Time Pressure. And that is because despite not seeing it anywhere on the outside of the book, as soon as I opened the book itself, I realized that this is actually book two in a series and I have not read book one. So this is going back on my shelf for later reading. All right, now I'm in the books that I actually did read. The very first being Bitter Chills, and this was edited by Nick Harper. This ended up being uh, about a two and a half, three star read for me. Overall, um, kind of underwhelming. There were some decent stories in there. A lot of them were just duds. Um, if you can, you know, if you can pick it up for free or pick it up for a dollar or whatever, maybe give it a read. The first physical book that I read in the month of December, and one that I am going to talk a little about, is Jennifer Armentrout with Queen of Light. Now, this was sent to me by a subscriber, uh, Nikki, and this is obviously fantasy. It's actually considered a paranormal romance, which is not my normal kind of read, but it's essentially about a half-human, half-fairy assassin who is sent on a task and during her time uh, chasing down her target she is introduced to uh, what's called a death angel and rather than kill the death angel as she should she spares its life uh, thereby causing this whole series of events where she gets entangled um, aside from that, she's already kind of entangled because she's the apprentice of the brother of the Queen of Fairies. And the Queen does not like her at all. So, there's a whole lot going on. Uh, the brother, who is also her master, uh, has a thing for her. And she kind of is interested in this death angel uh, so the the, ran, the romance aspect um, is definitely there and is not just a throwaway thing so if you are just completely opposed to any type of romance then this is not a read for you uh, that said some of the fantasy aspects and the fighting aspects are really good um, what I enjoyed in this book is that despite our main character being uh, this this tough woman, this uh, this assassin, this very assassin, she is definitely flawed and uh, 
most certainly not just some, um, you know, kung fu, kick everybody's butt type woman. She consistently loses fights and is only spared uh, through the grace of luck and other people. So I appreciated that uh, because I, I hate when I hate when characters are written in that uh, you know are just unstoppable right from the beginning, and uh, it just it seems so unrealistic to me. And yes, I realize that we're talking about a half fairy assassin, but it matters, you know. So I appreciated that part. Uh, the The only thing that bothered me with the romance aspect was uh, that it was sort of an insta love feel, you know. And this is part of a series, so perhaps later in the series uh, it is explained. Maybe there's a reason that they are just immediately attracted to each other. But um, I have to base it just off this, and just off this, um, I did not feel like the love interest made much sense. Uh, that said, the writing is really good. There's some uh, some very witty dialogue in here. And overall, I very much enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. So, thank you again, Nikki, for uh, introducing me to this book, uh, for sharing it. I very much appreciate it, and I hope that I can return the favor uh, sometime in the future. Now, the next book was also sent to me by a subscriber, uh, and this is his book. Of course, I'm talking about Troy with his book, the Forsaken Boy. This is a werewolf novel, uh, and this is a really good werewolf novel. Very much enjoyed this book. It was a five-star read for me. Now, Troy has specifically said that he uh, did not send it to me with the intention of me reviewing it on this channel. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time. Um, I feel like those of you in the comments are probably familiar with Troy, you've probably had conversations with him. Uh, you know that he's an intelligent guy, uh, he knows his stuff when it comes to literature. And all I will say is that that shows in this book. It is very well written, very entertaining. Um, if you are in the market for a werewolf novel, I highly suggest The Forsaken Boy. He has just put this version of it out, it's an updated version for 2020, uh, 2020. 21 and um, great stuff uh, dives into Native American mythology a bit uh, delves a little into uh, racism uh, very prevalent still now uh, and just a lot of fun all around I uh, very much enjoyed it and uh, yeah Troy again thank you buddy for sharing that with me um, excellent stuff. I really hope that uh, that you will put out more in the future because, man, that's just, it's a really good novel. I mean, that's all I can say. It's a really good novel. A little coffee break here, guys. All right, the next collection that I finished up was another Kindle. This is The Silver Waves of Summer. Edited by David Olson. I got this for free on Kindle a while back and I kind of saved it for December because I figured I would need something to kind of warm me up a little bit. Uh, this is actually a collection more focused on crime stories that occurred during the summer months. And I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Uh, it ended up being four stars for me, uh, kind of teetering on a on a four and a half. Overall though, excellent collection. Um, the only reason it ends up as a four is because there were uh, just a couple of stories in there that really didn't do it for me, that I didn't care for. I ended up skimming through them. This is one of those collections where the overall caliber of the stories uh, is well and above what you are used to seeing. Um, and I'm not really a, a crime thriller type of reader typically, but I found myself very much enjoying this collection and uh, very much intrigued and interested in what the next one was going to be about. Uh, this is one that I fully intend to pick up a physical copy of. Uh, it has a gorgeous cover and there's some really great stories in there that I look forward to reading again in the future. So that is one that I would suggest. Now, one that I will not suggest is Collected Christmas Horror Shorts by Kevin Kennedy. Um, 
he has a series of these out uh, based on different holidays. He has them about Easter and that, and he has multiple Christmas collections as well. Uh, this one was on my list for a long time, and I said, you know what, it's December, it's 99 cents, I'm just gonna pick it up. Uh, ended up being a two-star read for me. I'm not gonna talk a lot about it. It was pretty crappy. Uh, the editing was just uh, abysmal. I mean, it really was. Um, might have been a good story or two in there, but for the most part, this one just really tanked for me. Two stars. Going up the ladder just a little bit, this one is thanks to my dear mother. Uh, this is Ann Stewart with Silver Falls. Uh, she got this in that uh, blind date with book that I've talked about a couple times. Um, Silver Falls started out strong for me. Um, starts out with a murder occurring, someone pushing a woman uh, off into the waterfall. Basically, we follow this woman and her son who uh, she's, she's with this man that uh, she says she loves. Uh, you as a reader realize that she doesn't really love him, but uh, she's with him because she feels like she needs to provide for her child. And we hate the guy as readers. Uh, we're meant to hate the guy. It's pretty clear uh, early on that he is not a nice man um, and that uh, if bad things are gonna happen if this woman stays with him. Uh, which, you know, it, it's it's one of those that bothered me because uh, Ann Stewart really tries to lay it on us that, hey, this is a strong, independent woman. Uh, she's very intelligent. She knows what she wants. She goes for it. Uh, but then she just continuously makes these really stupid mistakes in regards to this one man who is very clearly a dangerous individual. So... Uh, the story started strong for me, and as the murders ramped up, as the body count ramped up, uh, it kind of started falling flat. There was romance and a love interest um, in the guy's brother who comes along and tries to kind of save the day, you know? Basically, it's one of those where everyone knows that the guy is evil and no one will do a thing about it. You know, his family just kind of accepts it. And you're like, what is wrong with you guys, you know? I don't know about you, um, I love my family, I love my siblings, but uh, believe me, if I found out that one of my brothers was going around killing young women, I'd do something about it. I don't know, and I guess, you know, sure it's easy to say because we're not in that situation, but I truly wholeheartedly believe I'd be doing something about it. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Tell me in the comments what you guys think, you know, but Silver Falls, three stars for me, started out strong, got weaker as the story went on, and um, it's not one I'll pick up again, it was okay, um, and that's it, we're going to leave it there. Alright, now, this next one is one that I uh, tend to read every couple of Christmases, that is L. Frank Baum's Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. I love this one. This is, uh, in my opinion, like the classic story of Santa. Uh, five stars. I love this one. Uh, some people think it's too simplistic or a little too formulaic. Um, I think it's just one of those stories that is, uh, that's excellent for any age group, you know? Um, for me, Life and Adventures of Santa Claus is what Halloween tree is for Halloween, you know, it's just that must have, must read for any age. Um, I don't know, it doesn't work for everyone, but five stars for me every time I read it. Next book, Watership Down. Now, I have not put a rating on this book yet uh, because I was going to talk about this one in its own video um, and I'm kind of holding off for a particular reason, so I'm not really going to discuss this. Just know that uh, I told you guys at the beginning of last year that I was going to read it. I did read it, and I definitely have some thoughts on it. Okay, this next one is a uh, sort of a children's middle grade uh, fantasy that is Julie Berry's Wishes and Wellingtons. This is the story of a young girl at a reform school 
who opens a can of sardines and in this can of sardines is a genie named Marmoros. And Marmoros will grant her her three wishes, but as per usual, uh, they do not turn out the way that she expects. And it kind of puts her and her friends on this whirlwind adventure. Um, but what's cool about this is that uh, while of course the genie plays a big part, um, it's not really about him and about the wishes. Uh, it's more about these kids, about these two girls from the reform school um, and an orphan boy from the, uh, from the shelter home next door. Um, I loved them sort of slowly bonding. Uh, the main character, Mauve, she is hilarious and awesome. Uh, a young girl who is just super feisty, super sassy, and uh, I very much enjoyed her as a character. She was great. Uh, all the characters actually were great um, and this was just a really cool book very entertaining very witty uh, and just a big surprise for me there is a second one and I fully intend to pick it up because I had such a blast with this one this one was five stars um, and so if you're looking for something that's more middle grade give wishes and Wellington to try all right yet another telling of the Santa Claus story. This is Joan DeVinge with Santa Claus. Now, this is actually the novel adaptation of a movie, and I really want to watch this movie. I've never heard of it. It's okay, buddy. Here, Havoc back there. He's not happy about, about being left out of here, but uh, um, I really want to watch this movie. I, I, I did not realize that there was a movie um, it's an older movie, of course, but uh, I love all things Christmas and Santa. I really want to know about this movie. Uh, the book is you know, the book is good. I give it four stars. Uh, Joan DeVinge is a really excellent writer. Um, I don't know how much of this is direct from the movie, how much of it is her, but. Uh, it might have been a slightly higher, higher rating if I had not already read The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus, but I did, uh, and that one for me always gets top marks. So this one was four stars. I still really enjoyed it, uh, but if I had to pick one or the other, it's definitely Frank Baum as opposed to Joan Vinge. All right, now this one was a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, this is one of the Nightmare Hall books. This is Diane Ho with Last Dance. And it does have a really cool step back cover. Um, Nightmare Hall books all take place at Salem University College. And um, this one was about, uh, in, their, in their college paper, uh, they start doing this thing where you can post essentially personal ads, you know, to look for a date. And this girl who works for the paper decides that it would make a really cool story if she put an ad out there, went on a couple dates, and then told people how it went. Um, unfortunately for her, every date she seems to go on, something awful happens to the guy after. Um, now, I had high hopes for this because it's Diane Ho, and she's, she's really good. I, I very much enjoy her writing. But I start realizing it in, in a lot of places it seemed very amateurish, uh, very repetitive. Um, and it wasn't until later that I found out that uh, that book wasn't actually written by her. It was written by uh, my least favorite of the point horror authors. I'm not going to name names because I might hurt someone's feelings or something. But uh, it was written by my least favorite of those authors, uh, not by a Diane Ho. And so that kind of explained it for me. Um, I gave it three stars. It was a decent read, uh, but it was pretty standard as far as uh, as far as teen horror goes uh, during that time period. All right, another book that I'm not going to give a reading to or talk a lot about this time is Laws of the Skies. Now, I intend to do a full review of this one as well, so that's why I'm not talking a lot about it. Uh, this is another one that Troy sent me. 
and I definitely have some things to say. So uh, be expecting a review video of this coming in the future. All right, last couple books here, guys. Next one is, um, I think, my second to last collection of the year. This is Humans Are the Problem. Now, um, this ended up being four stars for me. Um, again, better than a lot of anthologies and a lot of collections uh, in that I think overall the stories were of a slightly higher caliber. Uh, it was just a little better written. And uh, that said, I was disappointed to see that there are some definite editing issues. Um, and that surprised me considering uh, some of the names in this book. Uh, some really big name horror authors that, uh, you know, you would think with their names on the cover, um, there wouldn't be any issues at all, but there are definite problems there. Um, aside from that, most of the stories are really good. Like I said, I gave it four stars at the end of the day. There are a few that putter out for me, but uh, overall, cool collection. I love the cover, and um, it's one that I would suggest you guys pick up if you want to have a little fun. And the last physical book that I read for the year is a Fear Street Super Chiller from R.L. Stein. This is The New Year's Party. Now, this one is also a very standard fair. Um, you start years back when there is a, a young boy who dies at a party. Uh, fast forward into time, and there's this group of friends that uh, they love scaring each other and playing these ridiculous pranks on each other. Um, a couple new kids move to town, they all start becoming friends, and they all start planning a party. That's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, like I said, it is pretty standard fare. If you've read these kinds of books before, you know exactly what to expect. Uh, the twists weren't that great. Uh, in my opinion, you can see them a mile away. But that said, uh, it was still a lot of fun. Four stars there. <clears throat> and then the last two books of the year... Uh, were both five-star reads for me. One of them I have read before, um, and I enjoyed it just as much as I did last time. This is Jeff Strand's collection, Dead Clown Barbecue. <clears throat> now, this is short stories. Um, if you are at all familiar with Jeff Strand's work, then you know exactly what to expect here. The man love, love, loves his macabre horror. Um, everything he writes just about is, uh, is just very funny, um, and makes you feel kind of ashamed for laughing at it because, uh, it's gory and gutsy, and, um, you're probably a bad person if you think it's funny, but it's always funny. So, uh, <laughs> this is standard Jeff Strand fare here. Uh, there are quite a few stories in here that uh, you just, I mean, you can't do anything but roll your eyes and go with it. Now, I'll say that uh, these are very outlandish in that um, if you are not into horror humor, you're not going to like this collection at all. Even if you like Jeff Strand's usual work, his novels, his short stories might not be for you because he really ramps it up uh, in regards to the ridiculousness. But for me, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it the first time I read it. I enjoyed it this time I read it. Five stars. Jeff Strand, he's just, uh, there are not many people like him out there. That's all I'll say. And then the final book that I read for the year, one that was a total surprise for me, uh, was one that I got for free on Kindle. And I'm going to pick up my paper for this one because uh, this guy, his last name, it really throws me off. This is Greg Makraziki. No idea if I said it right. Sorry if I didn't, dude. With the absence of struggle. Now, again, I got this one for free on Kindle. Had no idea what to expect. Um, I read the first 20 pages. And there was a man in a bathroom hyperventilating because in a bag beside him, he has the body of George Washington. 
how can I not read a book that starts off like that? I mean, come on. And uh, I didn't know what to expect. I had no idea what to expect going into this. So it just completely threw me uh, for a loop. And I will say right off the bat that uh, despite what I just told you, not a lot actually happens in this book. The majority of this book uh, is just slowly telling the past of this particular man, man of, our, of our main character. Um, and while all these stories from his life are very interesting anecdotes, uh, there's not actually a whole lot of plot. Uh, there's not a, some big reason that he does what he does. Uh, it's just kind of a spur of the moment thing that ends up uh, ends up kind of directing his life in a particular way that he did not expect. Um, but it's one of those books that just, it feels very, uh, very real for the most part, uh, in the way that he, in the way that he talks to people, in the way that he acts and responds in situations. Um, I felt like I knew this guy personally and, uh, like I said, it's just a hard book to describe. Um, Brandon, I'm sure you understand if you see this because you read books all the time that you say have no plot. And this would be one of them. That said, it's just such a good book. Uh, the characterization here, for some reason, I, I just kept going back to it. And I really love this book. I don't know why, but I did. It was five stars for me. And um, I will be getting... A copy a physical copy uh, for my bookshelf because I feel like you know five ten years from now I'm gonna forget about it I'm gonna pick it up and enjoy it all over again so there you go guys that is my very lengthy uh, wrap up for December a lot of books there feel free to ask me questions about any of them down below um, there are two in here of course that I will be doing separate reviews on but that's it. I'm going to wrap this up. It's a long one. No cat footage this time. I'll make up for the next one, guys. But stay safe out there. I'll have another video in a couple days. Have a good time, guys. Good luck this week. Cheers.